sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Hi. Yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard. Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway, I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you too, actually. Oh? Are you sure you don't want me to go? That's not what I mean. I have a lot of questions. Like, about why Milliam transferred into our class, for example. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Let's look at that standoff at the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the Provincial Armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. It did look like your people were picking a fight. Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. But right now, the factional conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. Crossbell is buzzing with talk of independence, and Calvert is still weathering its immigration dispute. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up to the challenge are the Railway Military Police and the Intelligence Division. That may be the case. Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. I can't deny that, but at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give aid to terrorists, unlike some others I could name. I want you to at least understand that. Wait, so... Wow, she really said it. So the noble faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. The three airships the Imperial Liberation Front have been using have been traced back to Ordis as well. I'd wondered how they got their hands on those. I've heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but Eustace's brother came to pick him up in Legrand. That's what Toval told us. And now, Rufus just so... Captain Clare, what's going on in Ruhr? How are Elisa's family and the Reinford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The Railway Military Police is currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Reinford's first factory. Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Reinford's major divisions, right? Correct. It's one of the main divisions and handles the bulk of the company's iron. They're also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to The two of you are aware that project management at Reinford is split up across several major branches, right? It 
it is. And on top of that, she's got her hands in the development of our Arcus units too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. But suffice to say, the chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Lately, the directors have... Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. For years now, Reinford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. The company is split into different divisions that handle... The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large. Large enough to have their own internal... Are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. I'm sure Arena Reinford is aware of this to at least some, but the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has the side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt- So, the first factory you guys have your sights set on for that inspection? I assume. You assume correctly. And the provincial army is doing everything it can to stop us. That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that, I have my doubts she'll be able to target the underlying problem. It's sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more... And while all this is going on, the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the empire. I've told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country but Ruhr has an extra fuse of its own. Try to gain an understanding of the crisis unfolding here. Then do your best to stay out of it. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. Please have the bill sent to the Railway Military Police Branch Office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Wait! The bill! Looks like she just picked up our tab. She gave us some good intel, too. For free, even. <sighs> I can't just go running after her now. Looks like we owe her one. So, you like the mature type, huh? She's sort of like Sarah. Except responsible and composed. You can say that again. Oh. Must be yours. Hello? Reen Schwarzer speak. Reen? What are you doing? Oh, it's just you, Elisa. Well, what do you mean, it's just you? Is it true some girl invited you out for a night on the town? Whoa, hold on. Late night date. I thought you only had eyes for me, Reen. <laughs> anyway, good job, kiddo. You better spill all the details later, huh? He'll do no such thing! Now, now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. He was with him, too. Still, it was rash of you to go out on your own without at least consulting us. Ready to head back? Yeah, I think that'd be for the best.
Thanks for on me someday. Time has come, first hype. Nick Crossbell, now of all, shall be the fair to witness our conviction. Hmm. As you wish. We'll hit him so hard, they'll be picking up the pieces for weeks! You heard the boss, man. Tomorrow's a red-letter day for us. A real do-or-die moment, in every sense of the word. All our preparations will be rewarded soon when we sweep in and take the Chancellor's head. Keep your eyes on the prize, and give it all you've got! Yeah! Especially for a city with this many factories. It must be because we're up in the mountains. I'll say. Compared to the capital, the air quality is pristine. <laughs> well, the capital does have a few hundred thousand more people living there. Uh, uh sure is a nice day today, isn't it, Elisa? <laughs> Not as nice as last night must have been. I told you, I I'm sorry. Yeah! bet you are. I cannot believe you! After all those things you said to me last night, you go rushing out to meet another girl! Ooh, the skies might be clear, but I'm sensing a stormy forecast today. Well, all things considered, even if we assume Captain Claire is trustworthy, I'm not sure how wise it was to go out on your own. I know, I know. In hindsight, I regret keeping it to myself. Still, it was pretty bold of Captain Claire to show up alone to meet Reed. Even dressed down, I wouldn't have thought she'd go out alone with the Provincial Army on patrol. I'm guessing she's more than strong enough to handle herself. Not sure what her weapon of choice is, though. Oh, I wish I could have seen her all dolled up, though. But she was a real knockout. Come on, that would put a spring in any man's step. I don't blame you for sneaking out alone. Oh! No, it's not like I knew she was going to show up wearing a cocktail dress, I swear! You seemed pretty taken by her when she showed up yesterday, though. And your eyes were glued to her right up until she left the scene. Oh, really? So while we were enjoying a quiet evening, you were out carousing with a beautiful woman, were you? You lucky son of I mean for shame, Reen! We are here representing the Academy on a field study! I swear, you guys are just making things up at this point. But thanks to the information I got from her, we have a pretty good idea what's going on here in Ruhr. And now that we know, we should be able to do something about it. What do you think, Elisa? Yeah, I'm in. So in short, the first factory did something to catch the eye of the railway military police. Prom and all the while, the provincial army's been here- Let's not forget that the first factory is run by- I know that the divisional directors have been operating without much in the way of executive- But Mother always allowed it. She thought that encouraging competition among the divisions would yield more innovation. I never thought that'd lead to something like this. Seems like the lesser of two evils. By the way, hearing about the first factory made me curious. Well, to give you a basic idea, 